Um, if one assumes that nationalism represents a possible threat to democracy, isn't one possible antidote um, the multinational corporation, or is the, uh, is the cure worse than the illness? Well, first of all, I don't think that nationalism in itself is a threat to democracy. I mean, nationalism is, you know, can, has all kinds of facets. Uh, na nationalism can involve uh, 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 a focus on the richness and authenticity of individual cultures, for example. I mean, natural, if nationalism is exclusive and oppressive, yeah, it can be a threat to freedom. Uh, if, on the other hand, nationalism means ac accentuating and enriching uh, your uh, traditional cultures, then quite, that's a very positive development. Uh, so nationalism in itself, I don't think you can say anything about. Depends how it's used. As to the cure, multinational corporations, yeah, that's, I mean, we could have an East India company running, running the world. I don't see what that cures. That's, you know, a form of absolutism, kind of like Bolshevism and fascism. So it's not a cure for anything, you know, it's just an increase in the power of absolutist institutions. I mean, here I entirely agree with conservative, with the few conservatives who are around. There aren't, probably aren't any anymore, but the ones who were around a century ago. Incidentally, these multinational corporations, just for, to, to eliminate some illusions about this, uh, th there are, uh, so there are some very good technical studies of multinational corporations. The best one I know is, I don't see any chalk, but there's a very good and highly regarded technical study by two British economists, just came out recently, the best one. Uh, they study the top corporations and the fortune list of international corporations. And what they find is that they are really national corporations, they're not multinational. Overwhelmingly, their sales are domestic. Their power is domestic. They rely essentially on their national governments to protect them. Uh, their own conclusion is that of the top hundred on the fortune list, every one uh, has benefited from industrial policies of its home government, and more than 20 have been able to survive as businesses because of takeover or uh, bailout by their own government. That's over 20 out of 100. That includes, for example, Lockheed, uh, Gingrich's favorite cash cow which was saved from destruction by a huge uh, government bailout. Uh, well, that's, uh, you know, that's the top multinational corporations. They're not really transnational. There are very few that are really transnational. They're domestically based. They rely on the powerful state and, their, and on local markets. They do internationalize, uh, but uh, not to the extent that's believed. Furthermore, most of the interactions among them, about 75%, are in Europe, Japan, and the United States. That is at 75% of the transactions. Well, those are three areas of the world where formal mechanisms do exist, parliamentary mechanisms, uh, to uh, control all of this without fear of military coups. The authors are... I forget the title of the book, but something about it came out about a year ago, and it's the major technical study of multinationals at the moment. They're very skeptical about the whole idea of globalization, as are plenty of other people. Uh, if you look at gross figures of trade flow and investment and so on and so forth, uh, relative to the economy, it's not much different than it was in the early part of the century under the gold standard. There are some differences, but mostly in short-term financial speculation, that sort of thing.